اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین بخاتم النبیین بحبیب الہ العالمین اب القاسم المصطفیٰ محمد و اہل بیت طیبین الطاہرین الماسومین المظلومین الغر المیامین الدین ادحب اللہ انہم الرجس و تحرحم تطہیرا غلانت اللہ علا ادائم اجمعین من العان الا قیام یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ سبحان و تعالی بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبحان الذي اثرا بعبده لیلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا هوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير صلوات الله محمد وآل محمد In our discussion reflecting on the messages in Surah Mubarak Isra, after discussing Ma'raj of our Nabi and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam very briefly from only one basically aspect. Last night we discussed verses number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 basically. And these verses speak about Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wassalam and his nation known as Bani Israel or children of Israel. And Quran in a nutshell describes for us the story of this nation by saying that we provided Nabi Musa the book, Torah, for guidance, Hedaya, and the Summary of that Hidayat of Tawrat was Tawheed. And in Tawheed also practical Tawheed. Tawheed al-Amali. وَعَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَلَّا تَتَّخِذُوا مِن دُونِي وَكِيلًا and we gave Moses the book, the scripture, and made it a guidance for the children of Israel that you not take other than me as disposer of affairs, wakil, not to depend in your life on anything other than Allah. Zurriyata, who are children of Israel? ذُرِّيَةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَأَنُوهِنْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا O descendants of those who carried in the ship with Noah, indeed he was a thankful, a grateful servant. Okay, so this is a start of Israel, Bani Israel. And then Quran narrates 
history and also analysis of history of Bani Israel, children of Israel. In a historical form saying that two very, very big storms, very, very big events happened in the history of Bani Israel. Bani Israel. And those two big uh, disasters were result of their corruption. Result of their deviation from the guidance of Torah. And says that one after other, we again help them out after they were crushed. But their nature of arrogance, which Quran mentions, unfortunately, always took them to a situation and position where they started to deviate from the path of Torah, from path of guidance. And as a result, they were again crushed. Second time. Let me read it quickly. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعَلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا so when we conveyed to the children of Israel in the scripture that you will surely cause corruption on the earth twice. Now, Quran does not say directly that due to this extreme corruption, Bani Israel, you ended up in great disaster and destruction. And you will surely reach a degree of great haughtiness, arrogance. Faida ja wa'ad, faida ja wa'ad, ula huma. بَاسْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُولِ بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْهُولًا So when the time of promise came for the first of them, for the first for them or of them, we sent against you servants of ours, إِبَادًا لَنَا أُولِ بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ with a great military power, and they probed into the homes. Jasu Khilalat, they are they ransacked, they, you know. Wakana Vahdan Mafula. And this is a promised, fulfilled, you cannot avoid. So Maradadna Lakum Al Karrata Alayhim Wa Amdadna Kum Be Amvalin Wa Banin Wa Jalna Kum Akthar Nafira. And then we gave back to you return victory over them and we reinforced you with the wealth and the sons and made you more in numbers, you know, Aksar Nafira. In Ahsantum, Ahsantum Leanfusakum. Now conclusion, that all children of Israel your corruption, you think it is in your favor and your good deeds are for somebody else? No, if you are good, you are good for yourself. And if you are evildoer, and if you are corrupt, don't think you will be able to run away from this evil actions and deeds of you it will somehow return back to you. In asantum, asantum le anfusikum. Wa in asatum falaha. 
So if you do good, you do good for yourself. And if you do evil, it is for yourself also. For idha jaa now the second time, wa'adul akhira, and when huh, the final promise came, we sent your enemies to sadden your faces and to enter the temple in Jerusalem, Baitul Maqdas. وَلَيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدِ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Okay, and to destroy what they had taken over with وَمَا عُلَى تَتْبِيرِ Complete destruction. أَسْهَا رَبُّكُمْ أَنْ يَرْحَمَكُمْ But still with all your corruption and deviance, de deviation from the path of guidance, Still, God can be your Lord is merciful on you. But وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا It is expected if you repent, your Lord will be merciful to you. But if you return in عُدْتُمْ Sorry, in عُدْتُمْ If you return, عُدْنَا We will return. If you return, Autum means, Aud means return. If you return, Autum, Audna, we also will return back to that. Wa jahanna jahannama lil kafirina hasira, and we will, we have made hell for the disbelievers, a prison, bad hasir, you know, like a mat for you. So we discussed this. Eight verses, I just quickly read for you that this is a story of Bani Israel. Repeated corruption. They don't learn. As soon as they capture power and they have a position, they start fasad filars. That is the analysis of Quran regarding children of Israel. And they are reprimanded, they are, you know, warned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through ibadan lana, u libasin shadeed. Okay, and then I explained to you in the tafsir and interpretation last night that some ulama have referred to these two uh, disasters in the history and some people like Sayyid Qutb have referred to these two disasters in the future of Jewish history or, for example, uh, Ban Israel or children of Israel. Referring to world war, referring to Holocaust, referring to establishment of Israel, and so on. It's a little bit difficult to, with especially the issue of entering the Jerusalem and Baytul Maqdas and so on, which is mentioned in these verses. Okay, without going in those details. But the nutshell is this that this nation has this type of nature, unfortunately. Nature of arrogance. Nature of thinking that they are better than others. Nature of that they can colonize always other people, employ other people, enslave other people, and they have a right to rule over the people and steal from others. And still they want to say that they are the most upright people. They are the most clever people. They are the most, you know, pious and righteous people. This is what Quran is saying very interestingly, which is truth until today. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, after giving this history of Bani Israel and children of Israel, Quran now speaks about Quran. Remember, it's the story of Bani Israel started with Wa'ataina Musa al Kitab. And we gave Musa the book. Wajalnahu Hudan li Bani Israel. And we made that book guidance for the children of Israel. And now so in other words, Quran is saying 
that daura was book of guidance and quran is also book of guidance now let me read for you this verse this is the connection in hadal quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam wa yubashshirul mu'minin alladhina يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا عليما Indeed this Quran in هذا القرآن يهدي guides to that means to that path which is most upright which is most straight or suitable and gives glad tidings to the believers those who do righteous deeds anna lahum ajran kabira gives glad tidings to them that they have great reward and the same glad tidings quran gives to who wa anna alladhina la yu'minuna bil akhirah a'tadna lahum azaban alima and those who do not believe in the hereafter we have prepared for them a painful punishment salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now this verse is again one of those very important verses all of them of course verse important but has a great message for us especially related to quran this verse is saying almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that guidance of quran is the most straight upright guidance now quickly let me explain to you word aqwam word aqwam in arabic comes from qiyam and qiyam means standing which is against qu'ud sitting now why almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used word standing for the type of guidance of quran you know why because when person is standing straight he is in most stable position most stable position he has control over his whole body and he is ready to move in any direction he wants to move that is a standing position why quran called hidayat the guidance which is aqwam because the type and nature of guidance provided by quran is more stable is more straight forward than any other guidance what does it mean it means that quran provides to you a whole system of guidance and this whole system of guidance is upright 
and therefore it is balanced and therefore it has stability you look at aqida and faith or belief which quran promotes or guides is a straight aqida aqida and faith and belief free from superficial tendencies free from irrational you know approaches all these other approaches are weak are not stable are not balanced in aqida because they are based upon assumptions it's based upon i don't know superficial aqaid or it's based upon you know his stories and fiction and so on quran does not promote and guide you to believe in something based upon this type of foundation aqwam firm stable upright straight balance that's what quran gives aqida hidayah this is one meaning the other meaning is that even the practical teachings of quran or the practical guidance of quran is again stable straight upright and balanced far from both extremes this side or that side you must understand please the background of this verse very very interesting point you see what it says aqwam in arabic we got afal tafzil i don't know in english what it will be aqwam means more straight more stable more upright more balanced different translations more suitable more now in english also when you use word more what does it mean I mean there are there is a comparison there is something and there is another thing you say this water is more sweeter than this water word more huh? this room is more you know lighter than other room this place is bigger oh, same word with the er greater bigger so more is saying indirectly to us that don't think that other books were not books of guidance taurat was also book of guidance bible was also book of guidance old and new testaments were all books of guidance and in fact in fact all religions divine religions heavenly religions basically they were path of guidance they were guiding no doubt about it but this quran has more stability this quran is more firm straight forward it's a straight path it does not have up and down and left turn and right turn no straight path aqwa easiest path it is indirectly very great point which some of ulama they make in tafsir that in this verse indirectly the issue of khatimiyat of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is discussed indirectly it is saying this verse that islam is the final deen and therefore islam's path is the most perfect path is the most straight path is the most upright path is the most balanced path 
So one side it is indirectly saying it's moderate, it's rational, it is straightforward, it does not have deviations, it does not have confusion. And on the other side it is saying that listen, other paths were also paths of guidance, but the final path, the most straight path, the path which will take you directly is Quran. Because Quran is the final message of Allah. Because Islam is the final deen. Because the prophethood of our Nabi and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final nabuwwat of our Nabi and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi Wasallam. This is the meaning of Aqwam brothers and sisters. So, quite a bit of discussion. Now, as we have agreed that we're not going to go in too much in detail, Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli, very quickly, he says that Hidayat Aqwam, or the most straight, most straight guidance of Quran, means that the guidance of Quran is closest to the nature of insan. And therefore it is so straightforward. It's natural. And Quran's hidayat and guidance is after recognizing, please listen carefully, recognizing insan as Someone who is mutafakkir, someone who is thinker, someone who got intellectual life, who got intellectual capacity. Huh? So, yahdi lillati hiya aqwam, that Quran guides to a path which is the most straightforward, which is the most stable path. Why? Because it is based upon proper and comprehensive understanding of insan, who is human being an insan. Therefore, Quran's job is to guide insan according to his capacity. His capacity. And that capacity is to bring in sun from the darkness to light, from zulamat to noor. The job of Quran is to enlighten heart of insan. Job of Quran is to purify soul of insan. And take that soul back, back to its purest original status and condition. Therefore, it is Hidayat of Aqwam is the most straight and upright guidance. Okay? This is Hidayat of Aqwam. Then Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he says? Quran job is guidance, yes. Quran guides. But beside guiding, Quran also gives basharat, glad tiding, good news. Good news to who? Allah. Alladina. Yamalun salihat those who yamalun means those who act righteously gives them what good tiding for them is ajran kabira great reward so again indirect messages that iman is not sufficient amal saleh is also necessary. So from guidance of Quran, if you only clarified your mind and your heart and iman, no, 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 that's not sufficient. Glad tiding, 
for the final result is based upon iman and amal saleh both wa anna alladhina la yu'minun amazing amazing this is not a glad tiding this is a bad news but quran connects it to glad tiding huh? it's a bad anna alladhina la yu'minuna bil akhirati lahum azaban alima and those who do not believe in hereafter for them is a painful punishment this is not a glad tiding it's a bad news but quran says it's a glad news glad tiding why the discussion is there but you know some ulama they say this is like a teasing you allahu akbar you know to contempt to to let you feel that how far you are gone that to disregard you to tease you in a sense you say that i give you glad tiding of azab i give you glad tiding of azab an amazing from all the different issues quran says those who do not believe in hereafter does not say those who do not believe in allah do not believe in nabu nabi do not believe in this and no those who do not believe in akhirah means what because you know it's a very delicate point that maybe there are people from quran they will understand logic of quran they will understand philosophy of tawhid they will somehow will be convinced by logic by rationality of quranic arguments but they are so much in this dunya drawn that they don't want to believe in akhirah because believe in akhirah is accountability it's a question and answer no they don't want question answer therefore their problem with the guidance of quran not always but sometimes is not tawhid is not other issues all that on the rational basis they might accept but they don't want to accept or believe in hereafter why because they don't want to be accountable for their actions and deeds they don't want their hands to be tied they don't want to live a responsible life therefore quran says they are the one who don't believe in akhira a'tadna lahum azaban alima we have prepared for them a terrible punishment wa yad'u al insanu bisharr du'a'uhu bil khair wa kana al insanu ajula now in this verse which we will inshallah speak tomorrow verse number 11 quran analyzes human psychology inshallah tomorrow ajul and nature of insan which results in this type of attitude inshallah tomorrow والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته